What's good, everybody? In this video, we're doing a back to school algebra one review. So I'm going to focus on five key concepts that you guys are going to see in the first half of the year. If you find this video helpful, smash the like button for us. So the first concept is order of operations. So we're talking about the acronym PEMDIS and how we solve expressions in the order. So in problem number one, let's focus our attention to the top half part of that fraction. Because before we could divide, we have to take care of this. So we're going to have 25 minus 4 all over 7. And when we simplify this, we're going to get 21 over 7. Now the second part of the problem, we're going to subtract the difference of radical 11 minus 2. So after we simplify this, we're going to get 9. And remember that 9 is a perfect square. So we're going to have 21 over 7 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. And now when we simplify by dividing, we're going to get an answer of 3 minus 3, which would give us 0. So this is how we use order of operations to solve a problem like this. Now in our second example, I'm going to show you guys some key tricks they try to throw in to make it more complicated. So number one they're not going to put a multiplication sign when there's a number and a parentheses or bracket next to it. But we have to know that we are going to multiply. And an error that I see with this problem is students want to subtract before multiplying, but we can't do that. So after I take care of my, uh, my exponent, I'm going to have 9 minus 3. And then we're going to start inside the brackets, but we're going to focus on the inner parentheses. So we'll have 25 minus 9, close the parentheses, divide by 2. Now, we're still inside the parentheses, guys. We're going to substitute. So we'll have 16. Let's bring the bracket down, divide by 2, because we already took care of the first um, operation inside the parentheses. Now we're moving to the outer one. And we'll rewrite the rest of the problem. All right, so 9 minus 3. Now, once we do this, this is the biggest problem or error I see students make. What they want to do is do 9 minus 3 to get 6, and then multiply that 6 times 8. That is going to be wrong, guys. Order of operations, we have to do multiplication first, and this is where I see students make a mistake. So they're not going to put that multiplication symbol. You have to remember that you're distributing, aka multiplying. So we're going to have 9 minus 24, and when we simplify this order of operation problem, we're going to get negative 15 as an answer. Now, moving on to the second concept, we're now going to focus on how to simplify expressions. Moving on to the second concept of the day, guys, we're talking about simplifying expressions. And when we simplify expressions, we have to understand that expressions do not have equal signs. Okay. And number two, when we're simplifying expressions, we also have to know that order of operations apply. But before we get there, let's talk about like terms. So an error that I see students make, let's say this last term was n squared. They would think that all four of these terms are like terms because they have the same variable. But if this last term was n squared, that is not a like term to the other three terms, 15n, negative 6n, and 7n. For them to be like terms, they have to have the same variable and the same exact exponent. All right. So now that we got that together, we have to understand that order of operations apply when we're talking about addition and subtraction because we have to add from left to right. If I add in any other order, this will be wrong. So we're going to do 15n minus 6n, which is going to give me 9n, plus 7n, which gives me 16n. And then when I bring down that negative 2n, our final answer would be 14n. So when we're talking about simplifying expressions, guys, just remember those two concepts. Now, in problem number two, what they try to do is confuse us by giving us more than one variable and a constant. But guys, when we're talking about like terms, we could only add 3x and x, which will give us 4x negative 2y, negative 3y, which will give us negative 5y. And because negative 7 does not have a like term, guys, it stays the same and we bring it down. So our answer for this problem will be 4x 
minus 5y minus 7 is a final answer. And this is how you would simplify expressions. Now, in the next concept of the video, what we're going to do is now talk about simplifying expressions that have to do with the distributive property. So the distributive property is going to be our next concept. And when you hear the word distribute or distributive property, always think multiplication in parentheses. So what's going to happen is we're going to have an outside term, right? Or an outside number, negative five in this problem. And we're going to have parentheses. And what is whatever's in parentheses, we're going to take this number on the outside and multiply it by both. So in this problem, 2x is going to stay the same. Remember that this is a negative 5. So we're going to have negative 5y minus 20z. And because negative 10x is not inside the parentheses, it stays the same. We do not multiply negative 5 and 10x. Now, 10 times out of 10, hear what I'm saying. Anytime you distribute, you should always know that you're going to combine like terms, okay? So when we look here, I notice that these are the only two like terms. So when I simplify, I would have negative 8x minus 5y minus 20z. And at this stage, or this step, I should say, we will be done with the problem because there is nothing else to do. We cannot combine none of these terms. Now, in my second example, I really want to focus on this one because this is what you're typically going to see. We're going to have an outside number. We're going to distribute it to whatever's inside the parentheses. So when I distribute 3 to x plus 9, I'm going to get 3x plus 27. Now, one thing I don't like sometimes is they try to trick us so much. So when you see a negative sign outside of parentheses, what I like to tell students is put a 1 there. And what is happening is you're basically taking negative 1 and distributing it. Okay? So positive x now becomes negative x, and then negative 6 now becomes positive 6. Basically, the signs of everything inside the parentheses are going to change, okay? Now, once we do that, we can add our like terms. 3x minus x is going to give me 2x, and 27 plus 6, let's make sure I get this right, is going to be 30, let's see, I believe this. 33, let's, let's, let's just make sure real quick. Yes, yeah, 33. So when we're talking about the distributive property, guys, just remember these key rules. One, we're talking about multiplication. And two, this is when we have parentheses inside an equation, inside an expression, or even inside a inequality problem. Now, the next concept that we are going to focus on is how to identify and classify real numbers. In the next concept, guys, we're focusing on classifying and identifying real numbers. So we have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational and irrational numbers. What we need to know is that natural numbers are going to be all our positive num whole numbers, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. These numbers will not be fractions or decimals. Now, whole numbers and natural numbers are the same exact thing. Whole numbers that are only positive integers. The only difference is that whole numbers will include zero. Natural numbers will not include zero. Now, when we move on to integer, guys, integers is the same exact thing as natural and whole numbers. They will only be whole numbers, but they can be positive and negative. And the trick they try to get you with integers is they give you this. Because we know integers will never be decimals or fractions, but they will give you a fraction. And if you don't simplify it to get a whole number, such as this example here with negative two, you're going to think it's not an integer. But integers are positive and negative whole numbers, and they could only be fractions if they simplify to a whole number. Now, rational numbers, these are numbers such as one half or even 0 0.8. When they're in decimal form, these numbers are either going to be decimals that end, such as 0 0.8, or decimals that repeat, such as 0.33333. Those are rational numbers. And now in our last example, irrational numbers, perfect example is pi, right? 
a decimal that does not stop, I mean, does not repeat, does not end, basically. Those are irrational numbers. So pi is one and something like 0 0.54313 point, and that goes on. So now what we're going to do is classify these numbers. But before we do, guys, always see if you can simplify. So with this first example, this is not the number we're classifying. The square root of 36 is 6. So when we look at 6 and we classify it, it is a natural number. It is a whole number. It is an integer and it is rational. So it fit all three or all four of those boxes. Now, when we go to this fraction, don't just say, hey, it's a fraction, it's irrational. No, what we're going to do is take our calculator and do 8 divided by 3. And what we notice is it's going to give us a repeating decimal of 2.666, and it's going to keep repeating. So when we look at a decimal like this, guys, it's not a whole number. Remember, natural whole and integers, they have to be whole numbers. So if this is a decimal, 2.666, and it's repeating, it is rational. Now, unlike our first example, radical 36, radical 72 is not a perfect square. So if we convert it into a decimal form using our calculator, it's going to be a decimal that does not end, okay, or does not repeat. So it's going to be considered irrational. Now, the last step of the day, guys, or the last problem, I should say, remember that natural and whole numbers are only positive whole numbers. So when we look at negative six, we know that it's not a natural number or a whole number, but it is an integer. So we're going to classify it as an integer, and it is a rational number, okay? So when we're talking about classifying real numbers, guys, Remember the difference between each of these number sets because you will see in the first half of the school year. Now, what we're going to do in these last few problems or examples, we're going to focus on how to simplify expressions when they give us number values for them. Last concept of the day now, guys, what we're focusing on is how to evaluate expressions. So they give us an expression and they tell us the number values for the variable. So problem number one, they're telling us that t is equal to 10, and we need to simplify. So we have 10, right? We're going to substitute first. That's what we always do. So 10 divided by 2 times 10 minus 1. And when we simplify, we're going to get 10 over 20 minus 1, and this is going to give us 10 over 19 as a final answer. So when we're talking about evaluating expressions, guys, there's two steps. One, we're going to plug in the number value for the variable that they give us. And then two, we're going to simplify to the lowest terms or until we cannot simplify more. And in this problem now, I really wanted to do this one because when you have values that are negative, I always tell students to make sure that they put parentheses around it because you can make a mistake with the sign. So this says we have the opposite of y squared, right? So y squared is negative 3, right? Minus 3 times x, which is negative 5, times y, which is negative 3. So now the biggest mistake I've seen in this problem in the past with my former students is they'll either, they'll probably forget one of these negative signs because they think, they feel that, hey, it's negative already. I don't need to plug it in, but that is wrong. So what happens is once we take negative 3 to the second power, we're going to get 9. But remember, this says the opposite of y squared. So when we bring this down, we have negative 9 minus 3 times 3 is 9 times 5 is 45. And this is going to be negative as well, right? Because negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. So please make sure you guys also double check your signs because evaluating expressions, they're trying to get you, they're trying to trick you with the signs at least. So now we have, this is our final step. And once we subtract, we're going to get negative 54 as an answer. So this is how you would properly substitute and evaluate for expressions. We really hope you enjoyed this back to school review. We're going to drop part two in the next couple of days. 
where we focus on radicals, exponents, and more challenging stuff that you're probably going to see around the Christmas area and after Christmas break. Really hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and leave any comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you just had a question from today's video, thank you guys so much for watching Algebra 1 with Mr. Keely.